That was a fun little field trip out to the fire. The, the field That's trip. The fire. It's out to the fire trip. That was a fun little high. We had a fire drill. My brain stopped working. I got some sunlight. We were talking about sectors and what a sector is before we stepped out. It's a piece of a circle. It's bounded by a central angle. That means that the outside edges are a central angle. Do y'all remember what a central angle was? Yeah, what's the central angle? But yeah, the one in the middle. Yeah, in the middle of what? The circle. Good. I I can't even get anything past you, can I? No, you guys are too smart. That one. Good. Let's talk area formulas. Our first area formula is going to be the formula for area of a circle. There it is. That's the formula for area of a circle. Area equals pi times whatever the measure of the radius is squared. What did squared mean? Multiply to it by itself. Multiply to itself how many times? Twice. Twice. Good. Let's come over to our notes practice and let's look at the top four. Let's do number one. All right, number one, there's our circle. We want to find the area. What was the formula for area again? Area of the circle is, we just wrote it on our notes. I R squared. Lovely. All right. What's the radius? Five. Five. Yeah, five. Right there. Cinco. All right. Stick that in the calculator. Like literally type that into your TI Inspire calculators. Hashtag not sponsored. Oh, me too. Yeah, you too. Yeah. That way you can remember where the pie button is. Yeah. Down to the very bottom? Ah. Yeah. Then nada. Or in, or in Japanese? Do you understand? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. 78.53. Yeah. All right. We want to round it to the tenths place. That's one decimal point. So look at the number after the first decimal point. No, because I'm in the middle of class right now. Look at the number after the first. It's less than five. We keep it as is. So that little symbol for circle is just to tell you it's the area of the circle because there's going to be a lot of A's in this chapter for area. So I like putting capital A for area and then I draw a little picture of the thing I'm finding the area of. Easy enough? Do you want to look at number two? All right. What were we given in number two? Diameter. Yeah, we were given diameter, but my formula doesn't run with diameter. What does my formula use again? Radius. Yeah, two. use radius. So what should I do? Divide it by two. Divide this by two. And when I divide it by two, I get? Ten. All right. That's my radius. Super duper easiness. Yes? Let's see. All right, give me my, give me my number. Round to one decimal place, please. Please. 314.2. All right. Mm. 
When you're done, let's look at number five. Number five tells you, hey, here's the area. Find the diameter. Let's start with the formula. What's the formula for area of a circle? Pi r squared. All right, what's the area? Okay, yeah, square units, but we're just going to handle with the numbers. 153.9. I need to get the radius by itself. Hi. Thank you. I'm going to get the radius by itself. How do I do that? He said divide. Because I'm multiplying by pi, I need to get rid of the pi. Unfortunately, I can't just eat this pi. So I'm going to divide by it. All right, so someone needs to tell me what 153.9 divided by pi is, because you know. 48.9879. 48.9879. All right, I'm just going to leave it like that. All right, that's pi, that's radius squared. I don't want radius squared. Square root. I need radius. How do you want to do a square power? Square Take the square root. So, need the square root of 48.987, whatever. Did you see how we did that? All right. So, get me the square root of this number. Six. Six point nine nine. Nine nine one four. Yeah. Did we do what was asked? No. No. We have to find the diameter. We have a radius, so to find a diameter, I'm gonna multiply by two. What's the diameter? Thirteen point nine nine eight three. How many decimal places am I supposed to round to? Nearest tenth. That's the first decimal place. So I'm going to look right here. Is that number bigger yes. than four? Yes. Yes. So I'm going to add one over here. But when I add one, that becomes a zero, and I've got to put an extra one over there. So it's a four here, and my diameter is 14.0. That point zero is kind of like a little flag going, hey, we rounded. If you don't put that point zero, some people go, hmm. You sure? Easy enough? Yes. All right. So on this side of your notes practice page, you'll have five items to complete. We're going to go back to the note. Yes. 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 We're going to go back to our notes. We're going to grab one more formula, and we'll go to the back of this page, and we'll draw some more examples, and you'll have a few more to finish up. Okay? All right, here's our last formula for the day. The formula is area of a sector. Remember that a sector is a piece of a circle. It's a slice of the circle. It's some fraction of the circle. And so I can think of the sector one of two ways. I can think of it as a proportion. That is one fraction equals some other fraction. Where one of the fraction talks about the areas of things, comparing the area of the circle, or excuse me, the area of the sector to the area of the circle. So the area of the piece divided by the area of the whole. And on the other side, we can compare the measure of the central angle that's creating that slice to the angle measure of the entire circle. In both of these fractions, we're comparing a part to the whole. Now, if the fractions are feeling weird, right? Like, how do I solve what, right? We can use a formula. 
So these, this proportion turns into this formula for area of a sector. And again, I'm adding in this little pizza slice looking drawing to tell you that it's a sector. Okay, get someone at the door. The area of the sector is that fraction of the angle measure of the circle that is that central angle times the area of the circle. What was the formula for area of a circle? What was the formula for area of a circle? Pi times radius. Pi r squared. And so you could use either one of these two for area of sector. I like this one. Just because it's already all listed out for me. Okay? All right, when you're ready, Join me on the back of your notes practice. On the back of your notes practice, our directions are going to read, find the area of each sector round to the nearest tenth. Hmm? On the back of your notes practice, yeah. Sorry, the copier was kind of a dum-dum, um, and it didn't print the back of anything that I ran yesterday. I was really confused. So, yeah, we're going to do these by hand. No big deal. All right, here's the first one. Draw yourself your little pizza. Draw a slice of it. Color in that slice. Can you read that angle measure? Okay, good. I got some knots. And I need to give you the radius. This is a three foot radius pizza. Can you imagine? The edge of one of the slices is three feet. Okay, let's put that in perspective. Look at the tiles on my floor. Each tile is a foot long. This slice of pizza is three of those tiles long. <laughs> That's a lot of pizza. Yum. Huh? You'll take 20 of them? <laughs> Full pizza, please. All right, what's the formula for area of a sector? Area of a sector is. He points at it on his paper. Very good. Theta, which is the measure of the central angle, so make sure it's got the little belt on it, otherwise it looks like a zero. Theta divided by 360 times the area of the circle. This is a times, and I'm making it look like a star so you don't think it's an X. Okay. What's the name again? The name of this thing? Theta. Theta. All right, do we have the measure of the central angle? Yeah, we do. Here it is. Do we have the radius of this pizza? Yes, it's right here. All right, we're going to substitute. Area of the sector equals 45 degrees divided by 360 times pi times 3 squared. And we're going to stick that in the calculator and get a number and round it to the nearest tenth. Go. 3.5. That's it, guys. Is easy, yes? All right, let me give you some more practice problems so that you can just drop them off on any table, please. Thank you. All right. Here we go. Draw along with me. Lots of pizza pies. And you're going to do these next three on your own when we're done with our report. Can I have three letters, please? 
B. B. Should I say one more letter? M. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to give you a tricky one because you guys are brilliant. Can I have three more letters, please? S. G. J. J. Okay, look at number four real quick. We want the area of the shaded piece because that's the part of the pizza that you're going to eat. Number four, I did not give you the angle measure of the shaded piece. I gave you the angle measure of the unshaded piece. So what should we do? Subtract what I was given from 360. Why 360? Why not... Four. Why is it 360? Because the full circle is? 360. Exactly, ma'am. You subtract 36 from 360. That'll give you the angle measure of this, and that's the angle measure you're using in your formula. All right. I'm going to slide up to here. Go ahead and start working on these. I'm going to write out a little word problem for, the, for us to work on. And I'll do the word problem next. All right, my word problem says, for a party that Sam is throwing, she wants to serve finger sandwiches. <laughs> Did you imagine like a sandwich with a bunch of fingers inside of it instead of like peanut butter and jelly? It's, it is kind of gross, but is that what you pictured when you heard finger sandwiches? Yeah, the first time I heard a finger sandwich, that's totally what I thought too. Bless you. Bless you. But finger sandwiches are not sandwiches made of fingers. Finger sandwiches are, okay, imagine a, a sandwich, like a ham sandwich, okay? You have to hold it with your hands, yes, before you take a bite. Because if you hold it with like your fingers, everything falls out, okay? So now take this sandwich and cut it into pieces that are big enough that if you picked it up with just your fingers, nothing would fall out. That's a finger sandwich, okay? It's not a sandwich made of fingers. It's a sandwich you can hold with your fingers and still eat, okay? Finger sandwich. All right, so she's serving finger sandwiches, and because she's inviting me to this party, she's cutting those sandwiches into circles because that would be hilarious. That or she bought a bun of, bunch of Uncrustables, you know, with the, their circles already? Okay. So she made her own Uncrustables. If she then cuts each of these circles into three congruent pieces, what is the area of each piece? Right, here's what our diagram looks like. There's her circle sandwich. And here's her cutting it into three equal pieces. This drawing brought to you by Not to Scale. My mother's favorite map maker, Noto Scali. And there's the radius of her sandwich. 
All right, I want to find the area of one of these pieces. So that's really what I'm looking for, okay? Because let's say we're making this from scratch. We just don't go to the store and buy an uncrustable, but we're making them. And we need to know how much jelly for each little triangle looking finger sandwich piece, okay? To figure out how much jelly we're gonna spread, that's an area kind of problem. So let's start off with our formula for sector. I know, right? Do I have my radius? Yeah, it's 2.5. What else am I missing from this formula? Do I know the angle measure? No. no. So let's figure out how we can find it. How much was a full circle again? 360. And I cut it into three congruent pieces. Yeah, we're going to divide 360 by 3 because these are three equal pieces. 120 says most of you in the room. There it is. Throw that in your calculator, get a number, and you are done. How's that? Easy enough? Good job, especially after coming out of a fire drill. Thank you guys very much.